Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. So before we get into the games, let's have a look at the voucher code, King's Crusher. So you can get a whopping 15% off uh, with that voucher code. So uh, check it out. You just go to chess24.com slash premium. Use this voucher code King's Plural Crusher. 15% off. So you can challenge even the likes of the world chess champion, Megan Carlson, who is absolutely a genius at all time controls. Uh, there's other grandmasters to challenge, international masters, even bunnies like me and all the celebrities. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's go to the uh, challenges list today. And Zervic is the first one. Let me know if audio and visual is okay there on the chat, please. Okay. So I'm going to kick off with e4, I think, today. And the Smith Moral Gambit. This is quite a good gambit, I hope. <laughs> Generally, for, for Blitz Chess, this is an interesting gambit. Okay, I'm blunting that bishop. It's a bit of a compromise on, on the light squares to play e5. e5 can be a bit of a dodgy move. Am I going to regret that? Okay, there might be some dynamic play on knight f5. If I'm taking towards, um, you know, the f file could be dynamic later. I wonder here, um, yeah, uh, bishop g5. Oh, yes, it's getting a bit uncomfortable. Maybe he does play bishop h6 after he takes and then plays bishop h6. Yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced about my opening here being that great. Uh Let's let uh, Bishop F3 happen. Yeah, it seems pretty comfortable for black at the moment. Okay, uh, yeah, these knights are very, very annoying. On D4, tying my bishop down. Okay, can have this bit of dynamicness, uh, maybe. So the F file dynamic, is it dynamic? Bishop G4 to encourage F5. Because I'd really like to keep this pawn wedge. But I wonder, maybe taking an then, yeah, maybe there is a hassle with d5 after. So I want to provoke f5 to keep that, that pawn wedge going to blunt the bishop. But would he just protect e6? Is it is it just going to protect e6, I wonder? Uh, you know, maybe queen d7? All right, so that's that's the move I kind of wanted because I think the bishop needs a bit more work. Okay, uh, maybe here. Yeah, I'm a bit I'm a bit worried about knight a5 actually now for knight c4. That looks like a pretty logical thing. Yes, there are concerns here. Knight takes d4 might be something. Knight e2 to f4. Can I play that? Can I get away with that? Knight e2. Trying for knight f4 to hit e6. Okay, he's got an incoming threat g4. Mm. Maybe it's getting a bit scary. Ha! Huh. g3. This is getting scary. I take and then. Yes. All right. So tricky position. Tricky, tricky. Can I sack a pawn? Just put, give my bishop g2. And this is a bit doubtful. And then maybe king f2 for. Is he going to play f4 though? If I played that. Yeah. Try and get him to play g4. This is getting silly, isn't it? All right, at least I get the f4 square. Okay, I can see something to do here, though. <laughs> Knight f4 with king f2 without f4 being totally destructive. If I, I want to get that h file. So, okay, knight a5, b3, maybe. That's that other. Well, no, just take, actually. Just take. There's no knight a5. So I think the plan here for me is knight f4. Uh, and then 
Or could I get away with King F2? I, I think Knight F4. Oh, I'm wondering. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if, it, if he takes, um, you know, King, I still have King F2 and Rook H1 after. Maybe the, the Rook's useful there. Okay, I, I'm not sure. Uh, Bishop takes, G takes is dangerous because of Queen H4. So I think I probably have to take like this. I, I want to play Rook H1 to H4 and build the Rooks on H7. You know, having something constructive would be really appreciated. Yeah, rook h4, double the rooks. Maybe treble after. Okay, so maybe b4, bishop d3, or bishop e2. At least there's a bit of coordination. Um, Alright, so it's pretty solid, except over here he might not be. I'm controlling c2. Wondering about Queen B four actually, he just released B four for my use. Queen B four might be something. Would that be a little bit of hassle? Or Queen A five? Is that really super pedantic? That's what I've <laughs> that's what I'm left with here. But no, it, it seems like well, because the Queen stuck over there, maybe this is an idea. It's legitimate to go over this side. Okay, so I can take on a6, or is the queen getting trapped? There's there's knight b4 potentially, but I'm I'm on the rook at the moment. Maybe this is legitimate. Is king e3 to protect d4? Knight b4, queen takes b5. I wonder king e3 is not entirely crazy, is it? Just to protect d4 with my king. This is a bit unusual, isn't it? Okay, knight before queen takes. Can I grab this pawn? I am getting two past pawns. Okay, this is a pretty unusual way of playing the position, i got to admit. b4, a3, b4, b4. Yes, the king is the defensive piece. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what he's doing with his pieces over there necessarily. Can I not just play B4? I don't know what the threat is of Rook H6. So can I just increase the value of these past pawns by pushing them? Is he actually waiting for like Queen C5, Knight takes, but there's Queen takes there? Just increase the value of these pawns a bit. My Getting them hopefully safely. Yeah. Oh, he's resigned. Yeah, I, okay. I thought that was just weird, that game. I thought I was in trouble a bit on the king side. Okay. Maybe it acted as a positional blockade, that pawn sack, so I could, you know, I could play on the other side of the board. Um, A6 and B5. Yeah, wait, maybe they were a bit weak. So this is a, a three minute game, isn't it? Fast and Furious three minute game. Uh, So h6 and d6. So, uh, okay, I don't mind that. The sense of closed, that means, you know, f5 and knight f6 should be more fun than usual. So f5 with knight f6. So it's like a sort of king's engine fence with the pawn on c3 rather than c4. If the pawn's on c4, it's quicker for undermining like c5 to try and hit my pawn structure. Okay, here I'm a bit loose though. I'm going to guard against knight e5. Maybe knight e7 is another safety measure. Knight e7 and then castle. This knight e5 concerns me. If I'm castling into a knight e5, you know, with d6, it concerns me a little bit. So uh, can I get to play castling here? Okay. So, okay, at the moment, still there's no strategic break coming up. 
with c4 c5 i wonder so maybe uh e4 is good here for knights e5 that does give me knight e5 so i'm hitting that bishop but there's also potentially uh, f4 on the cards the problem is you know knight e6 might be interesting any f4 i'm weakening the e4 pawn so that's okay let's stop knight b5 for a second as well queenie yeah, i don't want knight b5 so probably a, a queen e8 g6 looks a good preparation Okay, is there bishop h5 there? That would, would that be winning my queen? Well, there's queen f6, so I guess I can invite bishop h5 for queen f6. All right, so now uh, let's see, is f4 any good? Uh, or bishop d7 for rook g8? Actually, there is also knight d3 maybe. Yeah, that bishop did abandon d3. Yeah, I'm going to go with that knight d3. Hmm. So, knight d3, any knight e4 takes, I think that's okay. Okay, I'll take this guy off. Take this one. Maybe I'm going to take here just in case that's useful. That pawn. Maybe d5 and then f4. So e4 isn't such a concern. Oh, or well, bishop e5 and f4. Oh, queen g6 and f4. Okay, f4 here. Or maybe e3. Okay, thanks. Yeah, much better than your rating, I, I felt. Um, Magzi? Bogzi? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, this is a five minute game. Can I can I hold D four here? Maybe Bishop G four. Um, or G five G four is that terrible? So I don't lose the pawn or D three and then C four. Interesting. Maybe D three is that is that too adventurous? D three. Have I got bishop e6 and c4 if needed? Let's see c4 coming up. So I think c4 is interesting. So e5, f5. Okay, there's knight g5, maybe queen d7. Uh, so queen d7 or bishop g5 queen d7 this looks as though it should be okay i like my pass pawn on d3 so i'm getting ready for b3 in advance is it possible bishop d5 is an idea okay although my king might be slightly suspect here after he weakens my dark squares a bit also you know the tactical e6 might give white some weird tactical opportunity okay i'll take there i think and go back to hit d4 is he taking here the queen g5 might have knight h5 behind it so if he takes and then queen g5 there's a threat of knight h5 is that a major concern? Oh, F four is also interesting. Uh, that pawn there, I don't want to sort of 
is h5 something i just want to play h4 i'm wondering about h4 okay so h3 is a kind of form pawn yeah I, i'm thinking this diagonal is going to be a lot of fun if i had bishop d5 bishop b7 then there's queen d5 i think the diagonal is fun uh, fun to be had so queen d5 coming up would threaten queen f3 that queen f3 looks pretty good if king g1 queen h1 so queen d5 here rather than queen f3 yeah i think this is a pretty good common square of the battery there i, I talk about killer common squares to my students recently they all seem to appreciate it where you, you got a battery and you it generates a few common squares so um that, that's one of the beauties of of batteries um Actually, I think Queen G2. Isn't Queen G2 there, mate? Oh, I think I might have missed the checkmate. Oh, oh, that was that was daft. Huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I think I've let my opponent off. Oh well, it's it's still a promising position. But can I finish this? Okay, holding on to that pawn. Queen F3. No, I might have let them off. All right, Queen G4. Oh, there's still work to do. Don't tell me. There's still work to do. Okay, I'm a bishop up, though. It's pretty dominating. I think Bishop D5 coming up. And... There's still some work to do now. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I missed the mate there. I need to check. I'm tempted to go and check now. After, yeah, I'm tempted. I missed the mate. I'm pretty sure. But I don't see it's doesn't it seems a bit bleak here for white anyway. Um, A4, okay. Isn't that Bishop G2 picking up the Queen anyway? That picks up the Queen, doesn't it? Yeah, no, 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 this, this is this is good stuff. This is good stuff. So Rook B2 is looking like good stuff. Yeah, okay. I, I made that hard work. I'm pretty sure I missed something. Let's just have a quick look. Is it... Just Queen G2. <laughs> yeah, I had this in mind earlier as well. I, I don't know. I don't know what I played here was taking that. That's a bit greedy, isn't it? When there's there's a mate in one. Okay, whoops. Um, Goggin pool. Okay, hi Goggin. So French defense, or is it some? Fra is it Frank over there? I don't know. Can't identify. It's gone to Benoni, has it? And Gorgian is quick today, huh? Oh, have I just blundered the pawn? I think I just did blunder the pawn. Okay, I need to get to my tempo. My tempo of the game. This is moving too quickly, this game. So I already blundered the center pawn, but he didn't notice. I think knight d2, yeah, was blundering the center pawn the way he played it. Uh, okay. Bishop f3, bishop f4 would seem uh, sensible to hit d6. So rook e1, queen d2. Rook e1 and queen d2. Um, right, black's a little bit passive here. So queen d2. Ah, well, maybe I can do this. But d5, he can take on d5. Could I not, like, take on d6 if he takes on d5? Because the idea of bishop d5, bishop d5, rook b5. Maybe it's more tasty for me to take on d6 here. 
Take on d6. Take it here. Because that winning that d6 is a goal sometimes against the Bononi. So it weakens that c5 pawn. All right, there is um, rook b2. All right, he's not giving himself a chance Oh, here for rook b2. And also th these these rooks have been forked. Pardon the French. So, uh, okay. Uh, b3 uh, or rook e7. Rook e7, knight f6. There's queen b7 there. And my back row is a bit scary. Why don't I just do a move which is a safety precaution, like for my back row? Because I'm thinking he doesn't really want his knight pinned, does he? Queen b2, rook e8, knight f8, queen a8 is a nasty pin. Okay, so just neutralize this from my always our rook e7. Well, either. I mean, I think this is this is okay uh, for a moment. B3. So, okay, there's a pin there with queen f4. Or queen e4, maybe, actually. Because I want to be able to play uh, f4. Queen f4 doesn't afford f4. Now here, on f6, I could get the queens off, I think. With queen e8, so that's the beauty of this. I think queen e4. I want to use that killer common square of the battery. Those batteries, the killer common squares. But here, yeah, just, just to get the uh, queens off. So rook c8 here. Okay. Yeah, two past pawns. Um... Pawns need to be pushed. Sometimes. When they don't create weaknesses, not too controversial. So these pawns are, I think, enough. So knight c7, there's, there's rook b7 pinning the knight. Yeah, I think that. Thanks. I think there was an opportunity there for taking on d5. Okay, so um, early on. So Dirks. Dirks gently. Okay. g6, bishop g7, e5. Knight e7. So we have a King's Engine transformation. Where I might be getting an extra tempo here. So knight f6. Uh, Alright, so g5, knight f6. Okay, maybe c5 is an issue. So h5, g4, knight g6, g4. In fact, I think I'll leave my rook on on h8 here. So I'm going to play for g4. Slow down the queen side attack with a6 slightly. Sometimes this is a good move to throw in. Sometimes I've heard a6. Even though you're not supposed to play on this side, it, it can be practical, I think. Okay. So g4, the owner of g3. And then if h3, then knight h4, and then possibly bishop takes h3, g takes, then queen d7. And if rookie one, queen takes h3. And if bishop, if bishop f1, g2. So that that would be quite difficult to defend if I can realize that. So basically, a form pawn on g3, a knight on h4, a bishop sack on h3, a queen on h3. And even in that case, if bishop f1, there's g2. So I think that's that'll be good to aim for. 
Yeah. So, okay, I'm keeping things closed over here. But B6, you know, maybe it's an issue. Not yet, though. Surely. That's check anyway. Queen takes his check. If there's going to be some sort of weird sack, it's not going to be knight B6 here, is it? Because of the check, surely. Surely not. All right, I might as well protect that then. Oh, there is knight b6 happening because of rook c8 after. All oh, right, yeah. Good. Okay, what about bishop b7? Why oh, am I getting slaughtered? Bishop a5, bishop c6. Ah. Oh. Yeah, no, maybe this isn't ideal. It's taken up my light square bishop as well. That's really unfair. All oh, right. Well, I, I don't agree with that. It's opening up my rook. I don't agree with that idea. <clears throat> hmm. No, I think this is a little bit dodgy for me, actually. Yes, this is dodgy. All right, knight h4. So I can play knight takes f5. Yes, a little bit scary. Mind you, I have a cheeky diagonal here. Because that bishop is not that great for this diagonal. So I like queen e7, queen a7. And I have this h file. I think it's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? For white. Um, maybe knight e4, f takes here, f takes. So get onto this diagonal. Or not. What about knight takes d5? Is that ridiculous? Is it f6 potential after? Or rook takes h2? Oh, that's interesting. Very dynamic. And kind of scary. Okay, I'll take the pawn. Am I getting into shaky waters here? Is this diagonal more sensitive? E4, E3, Queen E4 coming up. Okay, can I do this? All right. Okay, please take some material. I think I've had enough of the complexity here. Please take some material. Take the rook. <laughs> Is he taking the rook? Yeah. Bit of simplification, okay. So I'm hoping E4, E3, is that any good? Oh, I don't know now. The bishop F6 gives rise to queen H5 potentially. As well, maybe there's not enough to support the queen there. Okay, so yeah, I don't mind this because I want to play for queen e4 check or queen takes d5 for e3. Oh, okay, queen h5 looks very dangerous. Queen takes e4, huh? Can I do this? This is very grovel, isn't it? Oh. Hmm. 
Oh, hang on, you can just take that. Whoops. <laughs> oh, boy. No, I'm um, saved by the bell already. Uh, well played. I, I just no idea what's going on there. <laughs> oh, it's beyond. I, I don't know. I don't know. Cool, invalid. <laughs> blimey. Cool, blimey. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> Castle and um, going for E5 later. So if I castle the rookie one and E5. Or E5 here, is that, is that any good? E5 here? Am I running into something weird? It's like provo provoking me. He's provoking me for e5. I don't know, it's some sort of. I don't know. Okay, rookie 8, there's at least queen b3, surely. Or here there's uh, rookie 6. Um, there's d5, there's bishop e6, bishop g4, but e6, f takes, rook takes, d5, right, that's, that's a shame isn't it, is it, wait a sec, no I can play that, oh, what am I talking about? How is he taking this? I might be able to take with the the bishop. At least his pawns remain doubled. If if f takes okay, N not rookie six d five, but bishop takes. So his his pawns remain doubled at least, but he has and he's imprisoning my rook with knight e five. Is there queen? Okay. If I get my queen to d5, then the rook's sort of involved with with uh, d6, at least. It's not a totally stranded rook. So uh, I want to play for queen d5. Is that, is that an idea? Queen d5. <clears throat> so knight b4 though if queen d4 has knight c2 so knight b4 is a bit of a nuisance okay I can't see beyond that if knight c2 seems end of game so okay knight before queen b3 then ah uh, Knight d4 is threatened as well as rook d6. Isn't that? Alright, if I played rook d6 here, surely that's good for pinning things. Like, this is pinned. Absolutely, relative pin. Pinning things. Queen b2, maybe. Okay, okay, here. Yeah. Um, keep my pawns intact would be my first thought yeah yeah okay so back row issue to sort out now the threat is Knight g5 without queen f2, that's good. Protecting f2, actually. Knight g5 without queen f2. So 
So this is a nasty pin, but he's got an extra pawn. And yeah, if knight b4, maybe I can retain the pin with queen e6 with still the threat of knight g5. Okay, here, um, do I risk knight g5? Queen f2, rook f2, knight before queen e6. I, I hope this is not stupid. I can't see ninety seven queen e six. Oh, cranky. Knight b four queen e six, ninety seven queen e six. D three, I'm going to play knight f seven and queen d three. So maintain the pin. Probably on e six is best. Queen c four looks wrong somehow. Maybe b five, you know, tactics. I could maybe go back to e six after. Okay. I take on a two, take on f seven, play rook a one, he plays knight c three, rook a seven, knight e two, king h one. Maybe I should take the center pawn out. I don't know about taking the center pawn out or rook a one. They're fragmented. If I go for rook a one, these two are fragmented. My rook's in a good position. Let's imagine knight before rook a seven. That's okay. Knight c three, rook a seven, knight e two, king h one. Hang on, there's rook f two there. Hang on, hang on. I've always got. I can simplify with rook d eight here. Rook f eight, rook a one, knight c three, rook a seven, d three, king f one, d two, king. Can I get behind that pawn? I trust the simplification or not. No, I shouldn't have. That one's too strong. Oh there. Yeah, it's too strong, shouldn't have. That's a shame. The king's a bit aggressive already. That's a good thing. Um, I don't want to get mated too quickly. Get my king escape. What's he doing? Is he giving up <laughs> on winning this game? He's giving up on win oh man.
I gave up on winning the game. I don't know. Come on, technique, technique. <laughs> Come on. Every Russian schoolboy should know how to do that in five seconds. Come on. <laughs> it's just like I, that was a blunder for end game. Come on. Ah, oh, time pressure. You shouldn't let time pressure get to you. Well, it's very difficult. Blitz chess, isn't it? It's it's a uh, it's a horrible thing. Blitz chess. Bullet is even worse. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. I, I feel sorry. I feel bad now. This is this is that was obscene. Okay, that was that was naughty. Very naughty of me. Well, well played anyway. I I I miscalculated that, that pawn. Obviously, uh, oh, I wouldn't have gone into that end game. Uh, the pawn was actually dangerous from the opening. Anyway, I thought it was dangerous. It was dangerous. So rook c1, knight b5. Or give me bishop f4 here, won't it? Bishop f4 looks dangerous. What's going on here? How do I how do I get this position? This, this shouldn't be happening. Have I given too much counterplay? Is there too much counterplay? Like my king situation is wrecked. Um Oh maybe maybe rook c three. That would facilitate queen d4 without losing another pawn. Okay. Oh, knight takes e5, hitting the queen. Yeah, no, I, I think I had knight e5. Okay, I'm proceeding to lose this so at the moment. Okay, well, I'm not thinking about knight e5 there. Yeah, this is just a relative pin. Okay. D6 gives bishop d5. If I get the chance. For bishop d5. Battle of f3. So bishop d5. Would give rook b3 as well. Knight takes, g takes. Let's examine this. Knight e5. Well, there's bishop d5. No, what am I talking about? What? The immediate threat. I mean, bishop d5. Knight h4 for coming in for g2. There is actually queen d5 here. Hitting the queen. That could be... I think that's reasonable.
You know what? There's queen c4 here, isn't there? For queen c7. If the queen dares move, then there's queen e8. Queen c4 also hits the queen. Yes, queen c4. Queen c4. There's a big threat of queen c7, queen h4. Right. Oh, I'm losing material now. Why don't I do that? Game on again. Okay, so the, the knights are actually pretty good. All right, can I get the control of some files? Okay, let's not think too much about this. Um. Yes, how did I get this horribly difficult position? No, that's really unfair. Oh, good, it's a lottery now. I think it's a lottery. Um, have I got any plans here? Apart from losing the rooks to horrible forks. B, a pawn to b6 plan rook b2 without knight d2 will be fun rook b2 at some point will be fun Any other plan? Rook C7. Try and win F7, G7. Win one pawn. Oh, tricky, tricky. Yeah, Whew. I couldn't believe my luck on that position. And then later, it just turned into a nightmare, that end game. That was a nightmare with knights. So, okay, so this is a three minute game. So 
So credit for getting loads of counter play there. I, I just didn't see. Ugh. I thought, yeah, the double pawns and the knights, they don't mix very well for managing counter play. Okay, so e5 here, and then maybe bishop g4. So bishop g4 coming up. Okay, so uh, yeah, my king's being attacked, isn't it? That's not very nice. Okay, rook d8 takes d1. Queen e6, maybe. No. No, I don't know. I'll try this. Not convinced. H6 and Queen e6. Is he going to go for the form pawn of h6? That form pawn that could be very inconvenient, I suppose. All right, so c5 here. I can do this. That mechanism. Fancy mechanism, okay. Queen e7 for knight f4. So bishop c4 is interesting. Knight f4 to blunt the queen. Try and free the rook for rook to d8. Or maybe a6, b5 is a plan to try and. Restrict that bishop a bit. A6, B5. So we're uh, Rook C7 coming up. Or A5. Am I walking into something horrible? I hope not. Oh, craggy. I don't like the pressure on my pieces. Okay. I want the option for knight g4, do I? There's no queen g6 right now because of that knight. That's the one thing. Uh, okay. Um, hold f6. Oh, knight h5. G7. I'm going to take that. Check. Yeah, it's, it's getting a bit dangerous, huh? That was getting very dangerous. Indeed. Hmm. Patrick. Hi, Patrick. I'll go with this advanced Coracon. 
of the alteration. Um, okay, so bishop e2, the short, major like short variation, bishop e2. So c4 and knight c3. D5 here looks tasty. Um, intriguing. All right, D6 looks interesting. Uh, pawn wedge, although E5 could be a liability immediately. Okay, Bishop F4 though. I think I want to play bishop c4, rook e1. Bishop c4, rook e1. What can I? Okay. Rook e1. All right, it's going to be c4 there. Okay, so rook e1 and then knight d2, and then knight b3, maybe knight d2 here is safe enough. If I go into that b3 square, that looks nice to stop b3. There's knight a5 though. Okay, what about b3 here? Then change the plan. So knight takes, knight takes looks comfortable. I think if I can try and maintain this pawn wedge, so rook e1. In fact, isn't there a tactical bishop b5 here? That knight pin is intriguing. I think maybe queen d7 or something. So, okay, this position I didn't mind. This bishop could be trappable, h3 and g4, or more subtly trappable with a knight mover than g4. Oh, there's always bishop d3, okay. All right, if I'm not subtle about it, I'm going to just put h3 then. So g4, maybe there's a threat. And there's g5, there's always g5. Or bishop g3, bishop g6, or somewhere. Okay. Forget the g4. Okay. Rook e2 for rook e1. Or h, I wonder if h4 here. So if g4 knight h2. I think I've provoked some weakness there, which might be significant. Maybe, maybe. Okay. Um. Okay, I'll hold on to that. E five. For a moment. Okay, I've still got one pawn anyway. I think the knight can come back to g3. Knight f1 to g3. Okay, also h6 is attacked. Oh, the queen h4. Maybe queen h4, knight. Oh, knight f1, but. Okay, queen h6 is there for the taking. Oh, rook c5, rook c7 is dangerous. Okay, so here, if rook g6, queen f4. And maybe if rook m8, queen g3 blockade. 
square queen g3 against suppress any g3 here <clears throat> the moment so rook c5 rook c7 is threatened rook c5 rook c7 okay So I think rook c7 is dangerous. Okay, you can hit f2 though with a bishop move. Say, okay, but rook c7 here, maybe I can I can just take that at the moment. Um, queen e3 is dangerous, isn't it? Because if rook f2, queen g5, that rook across the seventh rank. Gives me some emerging, what I call emerging killer common squares. Okay, rook g2 threatens. So I've got to be careful. Queen g5 just loses for me. So I think I have to play queen e4 on rook, on queen h4, queen maybe e6. Or oh, actually, queen h4, there's queen g4. I think queen e4 is okay. Queen g5 loses for me, I think. <laughs> After taking them, rook g2 is it's not nice. Okay, so I think um, Queen E4, but very good game, Patrick. Very good game if this is winning for me, I don't know. Hope it is. Queen E4. Hmm. So Queen H4, Queen G4. Oh, there's Queen H7 here. Well, yeah, yeah, that was good. That was very good. Very challenging. Oops. Okay. Um, I could try that crazy Halloween gambit just for fun. I I've been playing it in turnstiles chess <laughs> and my own site chess world yeah I, I i just i don't know i've got this bad addiction to the halloween gambit right now i know that's not as bad though i think as as that other weird one i mentioned recently jerome gambit it's, it's not as bad so my opponent's just too scared of the halloween gambit just gave me the peace back straight away okay i'm not sure that's a theoretical line I, I, I claim that the Halloween Gambit is much better <laughs> than the Jerome Gambit, yeah? That's my claim. That's my claim here. Because you lose two pieces with the Jerome Gambit. I think that's that's the fundamental thing going on. <laughs> but the, the Halloween Gambit seems to give, for me, I mean, I, 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 I like the central pawn mobility possibility. But it's not happened here. He's given back the piece. But sometimes there's central pawn mobility. I, I have these terrible addictions to gambits, actually, in blitz chess. It's, it's um, yeah, and there's a temptation. The problem is, I find there's a temptation to use them in longer time controls. In fact, <laughs> in fact, probably, you know, if there wasn't this um, lockdown thing, uh, if you're serious, you you just study the solid openings. You don't waste your time even with blitz probably that much. But so I'm not that serious at the moment. Okay. So yeah, um, confessions. Yeah. <laughs> All that time I played the Alvin Counts game. It really dodgy stuff. Um. I always found the Alvin Counts game to be better than, for me personally, I fancied it more than the Buddha Past. And I was actually checking percentages actually earlier between like what is better according to chess games. The Budapest, I'm looking at white win percentage versus the Albin counter gambit. And I discovered um, they're very high for white, but there's not much between them actually. The Budapest isn't that much um, 
uh, greater win probability as you might think even though it usually recollects the pawn uh, yeah so that made me feel a little bit better that helping counter gambit if if the the problem is I don't know what is going on though with well when I in, in in a lot of online blitz people don't seem to play c4 they just don't allow either of them I mean they don't allow the gambits uh, if if d4 and you play knight f6 quite often there's the annoying knight f3 if they if they had played c4 then you've got an Albin counter gamut possibility I don't know some I think people are switching off the gambits basically in blitz and I, I'm thinking that should be studied this knight f3 move like what are the aggressive if there's any aggressive notions so d4 and then knight f3 and it's, it's a solid way to start a game in a fast time control and it, it probably should be you know investigated because it was a continual source of my annoyance that not being able to play the Alban counter gambit yeah uh, the problem with the Budapest you know just positionally believe it or not I don't like the idea that white has this semi open d file pressure and plays with like c5 break later I find that very annoying uh, okay uh, and we're getting into big trouble here. Yeah, I'm getting in big trouble here, aren't I? Crikey. Okay, at least there's no bishop e6. So can I unpin before I get executed? I'm threatening knight takes b5, maybe? This isn't that clever, is it, this position? Bishop c2 here. Now b4, I'm hoping I can just take there. This isn't clever though, this position. Bishop b3, maybe there's something in bishop b3 trying for an advantage of some sort. Okay, I'm being tied down. E falls a problem. Solid play from Oops. I'm hoping for one or two Oops coming up. Solid play so far. I think H5 is a, a liability potentially. But my E4 is a continual source of concern. What if I played? Rook d3 here with the idea of doubling on the default. Okay. Okay, so g4 here. Alright. This doesn't look very promising, does that for me? Um King here? Oh, there's always king d4. Rook a1. Right, I'll play rook a1 for a moment. I'm getting outplayed. That's nice. <laughs> Thanks. What have I done to this guy? Why am I being positionally outplayed? Just because I talk about gamuts. I'm being punished for talking about gambits. That's, that's just so unfair. <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, man. Okay. There's going to be something going on here. King d4, bishop b5. King b6, bishop... Oh, crikey. Bishop f1? Is that is that a way to play this position? Bishop f1? I want to try and get into an active position with the rook. Bishop 
Rook d8, Rook f8. Nope. Get munched, don't I? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's been really passive this game, isn't it, for me? I think only the clock can save the position. Can it? <laughs> I don't know. Actually, can the clock save the position? <laughs> Ah, crikey. Sorry, yeah. No, well played. I, ugh. Any, anything I was trying to do was neutralized pretty early. Uh, was, there's like zero counterplay. That's really good. If the zero counterplay philosophy, I've been the victim of it there. Which is a very good philosophy. Just don't give the opponent any counterplay. I just didn't feel I had much counterplay throughout the entire game. I also, you know, giving back the gambit thing. You know, I, I was hoping for a fun Halloween, so it was a bit of a fun crusher as well. Because sometimes the central pawn mobility is quite dangerous, but it's all uh, it's all been uh, you know bypassed uh, to leave me with a pretty low counterplay game. Very good. Uh, okay, so knight f5, bishop e6, queen c8. This is a three minute game. Okay, so prom knight. Don't be late for prom knight. It's a three minute game. I want to play knight b8 and c6, I think. To unblockade my c pawn. And then try and work on the king side with g5, knight g6, maybe g4. I'm hoping that the c file isn't such a major thing here. Or is, is the weakness of the diagonal important after bishop d3? Would he would he actually sacrifice on Bishop D three? Surely this is not for entertainment value, Bishop H six. I just take that. So this position, I'm hoping that any sack I should be able to handle. Can I can I play a knight G six here to be able to play G four? Right, so g4 is probably interesting for queen h4. Although, I have to factor in b5 now. It would have been maybe in the ideal world a6. Although, I'm wondering a6, bishop h6, queen h4 as a sort of pawn sack. That might be a better idea. No, no, b6 is weak. I think this b5 is not such a big deal. So queen h4 here, I think. Yeah, if b5 happens, okay, it's bishops distracted from that diagonal. Uh, here. I'd like g2 to f4. Could be important. If I played f5, I'd end up losing a piece. Ninety seven for F five. No, I don't. E takes rook takes. 
That's plausible. Wasn't that? EF, Rook F6. So Knight F4 is comfortable, though, maybe for White. All right, here, you know, maybe Knight D7 at some point. All right, the Bishop I can distract. It does stop my use of the d7 square. Has c5 got something going for it? All right, let's not spend too long here. I mean, knight d7. Protected by the bishop anyway. Knight f8. All right, so bishop f5 to e4. We're giving queen h4. Let's protect this d5. Take here. So bishop e4 gives me the option of queen h3. So queen h3, bishop f1. Right, there's knight e6 here for knight f4. Okay, knight g5 for knight h3. Or rook f7. Try and get the rooks off the back row. Um, all right, knight g5 coming up for knight f3 threat. All right, this is dangerous. So king g7 for queen f5, queen h3, or rook c8 for rook c2. Right here for queen h3. I mean, okay. Hold that for a moment. Alright, queen going back to hit a4, which he notices, unfortunately. Uh, okay, I'll take that one. e3 for f2. Yeah, this is a tricky three minute game. It's a very fast pace on these three minute games. Thanks. Striving for perfection. Okay. Striving for perfection. <clears throat> Hi there. Oh, I think we need the countdown here. One elephant, up to five elephants, maybe. Okay, no, we've got a game. And D5, I think, is welcome here to be able to play D5. So knight F3 and then um, A4, bishop E2 or bishop C4. All right, so if knight B6, bishop A2. Okay, I don't mind bishop a2, I think. I want to sort of flood the center layer with e5. Okay, okay. Maybe I should take here, uh, be content with this instead. Although it's not that convincing at some level. Uh, structurally dodgy, but that's about it. Is that enough? I turned into Leela Chess here. Yeah. Just it's the way he played it though. He's played it aggressive. Um so I have to play try and play positional now, uh, unfortunately. Uh so A five A six? Is that an idea? Is it is it structurally? It looks as though it should be something suspect about this, but there's a lot of peace play. A five A six Oh that's interesting. Surely the dark squares are gonna be interesting for me here. The bishop without the counterpart at the moment the bishop's not that great. But can I just try and open up the bishop? OK, 
Okay. Bishop b2, for example, for c4. Or in fact, letting it go, or, or c4 for bishop b2. That looks like an ideal use of this bishop without the counterpart. Bishop b2. So bishop b2 across that diagonal looks yummy. Bishop b2, queen d2, queen h6. It's a good use of the rook on a2 as well. Knight h4 here for knight f5. There's also rook a3 to g3 potentially if the knight wasn't on g3. There looks to be a lot of attacking potential anyway. Um, knight f5. Okay, there's rook f4 threatening mate. Queen f3. Has he got queen takes f5 there? He takes rook takes king f2. I, I'm not sure. Let's have a look at this. Knight f4. Queen f3, queen f5, e takes, rook takes, king f2. If I want, I can play queen g4 here to protect f5. If queen g4, knight h6, this position should be pleasant enough, shouldn't it? Just to get the queens off. Right. weaknesses around isn't there thanks yeah no, that was interesting that was a uh, quite dynamic quite pretty dynamic attempts compromising structure a little bit that sort of thing I do with black too much. Let's dangerous ride. Can I play e6? Yeah, limbs of engine. Let's have a look at the limbs of engine. So I want to take and then play e5. This is very nice, isn't it? Because the two bishops don't seem that brilliant here. Threatening e4. Got a nice blockade plan with b6. Maybe bishop a6 later. Uh, it might be inappropriate though. The knight has to go back to c6 to a5. Is that inappropriate? B6 for bishop a6. The knight going back to a5. Thinking about Nimzovich. He'd like a knight on a5, a bishop on a6. How does b file potential work in that situation? Is that a4, a5? Okay, so he parries this e4 with something. 
b6 and I'm playing for bishop a6 there's also queen a4 to factor in knight b8 protects on road and maybe I'll play queen a8 after to evict okay so let's put the money where the mouth is on this bishop a6 No, it's a different plan. He's dragged my knight all the way to f6. There's no way it's going to a5. Okay, I think a key point here is not to make it a dangerous ride by keeping this bishop locked into the pawn structure. Then it won't be such a dangerous ride. I would expect c4 that target potentially on the c file as well if he doesn't close the center it might be tempting yeah liberating the bishop any cd's downside liberating the bishop i want to try and keep this locked in and somehow maybe e4 is actually appropriate for the lock-in strategy of c1 this is ocd might if he increases the lock in with d5 of the c1 bishop. All right, so okay, a5 on the way. Uh, let's parry that mysterious rook move, as the Mizovich would say. So a5, okay, rook b8. So I want to play, I think, bishop b7, actually a b a b. I'm protecting the rook on a8. Unless I dissolve with b5, b5 is also interesting. Okay, b5. Because there's weaknesses that are created after. Like Nim Nimzvich, uh, Mattison against Nimzvich, I think, had Mighty Knight on c4 later. After Nimzvich dissolved his um, the doubled pawns. So it's not as crazy as it seems, but this bishop is being liberated here. Weakness of the last move, though, a little bit. E takes for e3. Okay. Maybe I'll just use the b file here. I'm quite good on the b file, am I? H6, because G6 looks as though I'm asking for that bishop later to, to crush me. H6 looks a little bit more modest in terms of creating loads of weaknesses around the king. H6 rather than G6. If I want to give some air to the king here. Right. Okay, this B file, can I invade B file? Queen B3 hits C4. There's no rook B1 just yet. Queen B3? Oh, hang on, he can really damage things with taking them bishop F6. Maybe it's time for this, because Queen B1 might be interesting, or Knight E4. Okay, well, knight e4 here, queen d3, f5. I've, I feel I've lost significant control in the position, actually, unfortunately. Nevertheless, okay, queen d3, f5. And so f6 here. Okay, there's still c4 pressure. He hasn't got the bishop here. That's, maybe that's good news. I'm still controlling the b file a bit. Can I tie down to e3 here? Rook f4, there's queen f4. I'm threatening queen e3, but also cd and bishop and queen d4. 
Oh, bishop d4. No, I'm not. Bishop d4 is holding that. Alright, bishop b7 for a moment then. King safety. Do I actually need a form pawn? Alright, c4. Alright, it looks as though bishop c4, bishop d5 is going to be good. Okay, my king, put it on here, or not. Is that bishop f6 or something? Right, let's hold this for a moment. Okay. <laughs> queen d3, maybe queen d3, queen d6. Queen e2. I can threaten mate with check. Oh, there's rookie one. All right, what about rookie six? Hang on a sec. Let's check. Yeah, okay, thanks for letting me have a Nims Union. That's quite a fun opening, actually. A lot of people avoid the Nimzo now. They just play boring stuff. Like Knight F3. So you have to, if you're going to play the Nimzo, you need to know about the Queen's engine. But yeah, that was a fun, you know, Nimzos can be fun, actually. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this session. Um, yeah, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, remember about the voucher codes, King's Crusher voucher code. Let me just recap you on that. So chess24.com slash premium uh, Touch code Keens Crusher for fifteen percent off premium membership. Okay, have a good week. Uh, see you next week. Thanks so much.